these are some of the terminologies that you should remember. First, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It is a group of 34 member countries that discuss and develop economic and social policies. Second, Gross Domestic Product or GDP. It measures the value of economic activity within a country. When you think of Chinese, one of the things that will cross your mind is business. Most Chinese people are good at business or handling money. But why is that so? Before we go through that, we're going to give you a little background on how languages work. Okay, for today, we'll be comparing the English, the Chinese, and the Filipino language. For beginners, the Chinese language can be very difficult and challenging to learn. Why? Because unlike most countries and most languages, the Chinese language has a very different structure. Unlike the English language, the Chinese language has no tenses. Meanwhile, the Filipino grammar is very similar to the English grammar. A simple sentence has a subject and a predicate. But in the Filipino context or in the Filipino language, the verb or predicate comes first before the subject. There are four examples of Chinese structure. Subject plus verb. Subject plus verb plus object. Subject plus time plus verb plus object. And subject plus verb plus object plus ma. First, an example for subject plus verb is simply you plus eat is equal to you eat. Secondly, an example for subject plus verb plus object is you plus eat plus rice is equal to you eat rice. Third, an example of subject plus time plus verb plus object is Ni Jin Tian Chi Fan. Ni Chi Fan means you eat rice and Jin Tian means today. Instead of changing the verb into past, present, and future, like in English, they add the time after the noun. The verb chi has a timeless quality about it, sort of like an element in chemistry. Lastly, adding ma is changing the sentence into a question. Meanwhile, in Filipino, tumakbo is the verb and si John is the predicate. And when combined, it becomes a full sentence, tumakbo si John. And in the English language, when translated, John ran. In addition to this, the Filipino language has three tenses. The past, the present, and the future. The past, kumakain. The future is kakain. And the present is kumakain. In English, she ate is the past. She's eating is the present. And she will eat is the future. Hence, China, the Chinese language has a featureless language, while the Filipino language is a featured language due to the presence of the three tenses, the past, the present, and future. Now, we're going to talk about their culture. According to Dao De Jing, the three greatest treasures a person can have is love, frugality, and generosity. And therefore, frugality is an integral part of the Chinese culture, not just a communist propaganda. Out of such virtue, Chinese people became known for bargaining. They bargained for half the price or 75% of it so that they could get the lowest possible price for a product. Since they are much more engaged in cash, rather than in credit. Now let's head to the Filipino culture. So Filipinos are believed to have all the necessary positive traits to make financial strides. Filipinos are hardworking, resilient, and optimistic. However, lack of focus and false prioritization makes the nation as one of the countries with lowest financial literacy rate amongst working population of 25%. Despite these things, Filipinos are actually able to save money throughout history. Filipinos were raised to use informal means of money saving, alcansha to be specific. It is good to teach this to the youth to instill the value of money saving. However, adults are advised to put their money in the banks in the hope of gaining much more money. In the Philippines, there's a habit called manyata, in which Filipinos would ignore saving money and would procrastinate instead. Hmm, payday na naman. Kaya pwede kong gawin dito. Lazada kaya ako. Kaya pwede kong mabili gamit ng pera na to. Hmm. As you can see, instead of saving his money for future purposes, he already wants to spend it on things he doesn't need. In addition to this, Filipinos like to live life to the fullest, so they spend on things they do not need 
or they would focus too much on buying the things they want instead of need. Hmm, bilhin na kaya ako pagkain. Bilhin na kaya. Hindi kaya bagong sapatos na lang kaya. Hmm, pwede, pwede. Most Filipinos would rather prioritize their wants over their needs. Uy, ano? Can you come with me to the U Mall and buy hot compress for my person? Ah, sige, pero may budget ka pa ba? Ay, sige, huwag na nga lang. <laughs> Uy, ano yan? Ah, nag-online shopping lang ako. Kasi 11-11. Uy, sama ako. Wala ka lang pera, di ba? Okay lang yan. Pwede naman mangutang eh. Add to kahit na lang lahat. Jeez! <laughs> Here we can see that she needed to buy hot compress for her cramps, but instead of buying her needs, she decided to do online shopping instead, and she was willing to borrow money just to satisfy her wants. Other than manyata and living life to the fullest type of spending habits, Filipinos have this kia in them that makes saving harder. This kia is a false act of humility, wherein we do not dare ask about anything for fear of getting ridiculed. Kia is a value people manifest in situations, and the majority of the time, it leads to detrimental effects, notably money habits. Lastly, Filipinos fall for the trap of Libre, wherein a person would actually cover all expenses for something. Filipinos would actually do Libre out of Kia and as means of pakikisama. It is a bad way of spending money as people may take advantage of you. Filipinos are actually advised to share their financial goals and problems with someone trustworthy in order to get insights and sound advice. Furthermore, they like to entrust their future to Batman or bahala na si Batman. They would spend and buy things that are not included in their budget. Uh, an example of this scenario is buying clothes that are 70% off and forgetting that they have to allocate their money for emergency funds. So when there is an emergency, they do not have much. Hello, Ma. Nak, may pera ka ba dyan? Kailangan ko ng gamot eh. Ma, naku po. Nag-shopee po ako last week. Wala na po akong baon. Most Filipinos prioritize their wants. And when the time comes that they need to buy something important, they don't have money to pay for it. So... Do these reasons really have an effect on how Chinese and Filipinos save? Or is, is it really their language? So on the left of this graph, you can see that many OECD countries are saving over a quarter of their GDP every year and some saving over a third of their GDP per year. All the way to the right is Greece. And you can see that over the last 25 years, Greece has managed to save more than 10% of their GDP. Now that we see these huge differences in saving rates, according to Keith Chen, how is it possible that language have something to do with these differences or how these countries save? So the main question is, could your language affect your ability to save money? At first, the two seem unrelated. How can language possibly affect your ability to save money? Well, in the 2012 TED Talk of Keith Chen, he claimed a new hypothesis that stated that language can indeed affect your ability to save money. Furthermore, the behavioral economist classified language into two, the futureless and the featured language. Futureless languages such as Chinese reject the presence of time, wherein it perceives present and future as the same. Meanwhile, future languages acknowledge the presence of time, wherein it creates disparity between present and the future. According to Keith Chen, in English, when we say it is raining today, we are talking about the present. But if we say it will rain tomorrow, it seems like it is far away from the present. In futureless languages such as Chinese, it directly translates to it rained today and tomorrow it rained. Notice that it is more associated with the present which sounds wrong for an English speaker. The Chinese language does not divide the time spectrum in the same way that English language does. These small details in our language change the way we perceive the future. 
If you think of the future as if it were near, then you are more likely to prepare for it. Language does affect people's ability to save money. However, it entailed considering many factors for segmentation, making a granular sample. With Ki Chen's study, he used demographics like age, sex, income level, educational attainment, and family structure in order to attain a granular sample. The results that were imparted by the study were granular effects to these samples and may not be generalized to an economy. There are a lot of articles and books saying that how we speak really affects the way we think and act. And one of the articles is written by Jessica Gross in 2013 and she gave four examples about how language can affect the way we think. First is navigation in Pomperawans. In a Australian community, they wouldn't refer to an object as on your right or left but rather as northeast or southwest. And as a result of this linguistic training, people who speak this way are good at staying oriented and keeping track of where they are, even if they are in place they are unfamiliar with. Second is blaming English speakers. In English, we often say that someone broke a vase even if it was an accident. However, in Spanish and Japanese, they often say that the vase broke itself. And as a result, English speakers are more likely to remember who popped the balloons, who broke the eggs, or who spilled the drinks compared to Spanish and Japanese speakers. Third is color among Zuni and Russian speakers. A study in 1957 found that Zuni speakers who don't differentiate between orange and yellow have trouble telling them apart. In contrast, Russian speakers have separate words for light blue and dark blue. And as a result, they are better at picking out blues compared to Zuni speakers. Last is a gender in Finnish and Hebrew. In Hebrew, gender markers are all over the place, whereas Finnish doesn't mark gender at all. A study done in 1980s found that kids who spoke Hebrew knew their own gender a year earlier than those who grew up speaking Finnish. According to Kitchen, savings can also be associated with behavior and health. While savings is current pay in exchange for future gain, smoking meanwhile is the total opposite, as it is current pleasure but in return future pain as diseases and illnesses come later on. Another example that Keith Chen gave is the usage of condoms in the practice of safe sex. While current pain is the, and future gain is the usage of condoms, for others it is not pleasurable, but this puts the two partners in risk of getting HIV or having an unwanted pregnancy. Thus, the next time you hesitate on doing something, remember, great pain will always amount to future gain. Furthermore, a scientific study conducted by Ellen Langer proved that the way you speak can have an effect on someone's health or behavior. When she asked seniors to describe their past, but instead of describing it as if it was in the past, she asked them to use it in present tense. And in return, this brought back the past to life. And hence, this had the positive effect on their physical well-being. Featureless language countries have an average savings rate difference of 5% in comparison to its featured counterparts. Furthermore, these featureless language speakers would tend to have an approximately 30% of savings in any given year would then may contribute to a total of roughly 25% savings upon retirement. The claims of behavioral economist Keith Chen may be true at some points. However, it cannot be clearly ruled out that spoken language does affect people's ability to save money. According to World Bank's cross savings percentage of 2017, East Asia and Pacific region had an average cross saving percentage of 36%. The East Asia and Pacific are home to many countries that utilize future languages such as the Philippines, South Korea, North Korea, Russia to name a few. Furthermore, as of World Bank's gross saving percentage of 2018, Philippines had a gross saving percentage of 42.34%. Therefore, the claim of Keith Chen may not be fully believed as other factors and not language alone affect the ability of people to save money. 
Perhaps the way we think really does affect our way of thinking, saving, our mental and physical health. But rather than blaming it on our language, why don't we alter the way we express these benefits to others, regardless of the grammar or any verb rule out there in any language?